So we, we've seen now, at least in these experiments, examples, that there are higher dimensional systems that exhibit bifurcations the way we saw them in this very low dimensional framework, just one dimension. And so now we want to see how we actually can get such a low dimensional description from systematically from a high dimensional system. So what we're looking for is a manifold, meaning a smooth set of points, like a surface, a smooth surface in phase space, such that it captures the complete dynamics that are associated with that bifurcation. So we're still thinking in terms of a fixed point going unstable or exhibiting some bifurcation. And so all the dynamics in the vicinity of that fixed point, local to that fixed point, that's what we would like to describe in a lower dimensional description. And so this manifold that we're thinking of, it should be invariant under the dynamics, as in if you start on it, you should stay on it because you want to have a description for all times, actually also for all negative times. So the, an orbit that starts in that uh, manifold should be there for all times. So is that actually possible? Um, well, let's, let's first think of a very simple system, just a linear two-dimensional system. That's our high dimensional system, right? So say we have x dot equals uh, mu of x and y dot equals minus y. And that's our high dimensional system. And the goal is to see whether there's a low dimensional system that would describe what's going on in this system. Okay, so what we want to find out is what are the trajectories of the system. And so it's simple to solve for the trajectory. And so we get y is equal to y naught times x of t divided by x naught to the uh, plus one over the absolute value of mu uh, power. I write, I write this explicitly as uh, one over the absolute value because mu is negative right now and I want to just make sure that we have a positive exponent. And the important part is that we're thinking of mu may be very small. I mean, mu is negative, but if mu is very small, then you see that this exponent here is very large. And the trajectories kind of look like this. So if you just plot it simply in x and y, then you have trajectories that look like that. Um, they're very high power polynomials, so they're very flat, and then they rise very steeply. And so depending on what initial conditions you, you start with, say you start with another initial condition, maybe this one, then again, the trajectory very quickly approaches the, the x-axis, and then it creeps along the x-axis. And uh, that creeping and quick is associated with that the decay rate of y is one, whereas the decay rate of x is mu, so it's very small when we pick mu small, close to the bifurcation point. And so that's why we have a rapid approach here and then a slow approach here. So that's in a linear system. And so we could imagine now that actually this thing here, this x-axis, could be our the manifold we're thinking of. And uh, so let, let's see, however, whether that's only true in linear systems or can we have that also in nonlinear system. So just to get started, that's simulated um, in a simple two-dimensional system. So I just use um, good old p-plane and we're solving this simple equation here. Uh, x prime x mu x plus alpha x y minus gamma x cubed. So there's some nonlinearities and it's two components. And so if mu is equal to minus one, then uh, <clears throat> let me move that picture away. Then this is what it, uh, the flow field looks like. And if I start from some initial conditions, I get trajectories like this and like this and like this and like this and like that and so in this case obviously there's no there's nothing to to be seen that would be a manifold that captures all the dynamics in the vicinity of that fixed point that was from mu equals minus one so actually the decay rate of x is the same as for y so if you make that decay rate smaller say 0.1 then the situation looks slightly different if i again take a couple of initial conditions i get a trajectory like that one like that one like that. How about this guy? How about this guy? And one more here. And this guy here. And you see now 
sort of there is when they approach all these trajectories approach something like that sort of here you see kind of like a parabola showing up uh, let's make new yet smaller so the decay rate in the x direction is now only 0.01 whereas in the y direction it's still equal to one and so what do the trajectories look like now things happen very slowly so you have to be patient you can't see the red dot as it's moving there it's slow okay but so let's take another initial condition here and you see again it, it approached very quickly this parabolic shape and then it's marching along here you have you can't really see it but it's actually marching along going to the same point here let me just do one more here um actually another one down here just for completeness okay let's wait one here okay so it seems like there would be a manifold a smooth set of points here which attracts these orbits and then really as time progresses they really essentially just live on that man on that uh, manifold okay so if that's the case let's just play a little bit more because what we want is we want to have also the bifurcation occur that occurs when mu changes and in this case, mu equals the rise to bifurcation point. And we'd like to capture the dynamics of that bifurcation, meaning in this case, it turns out it's a pitchfork bifurcation. So we'd like to see if we now take mu slightly positive, uh, let's maybe take uh, plus 0.05. Then we'd like to see that there's again some kind of a manifold uh, that would include those two fixed points that we know that emerge in that pitchfork bifurcation. And uh, the trajectory should approach that uh, manifold quickly. Um, because that's what, we, that's what we would be hoping for. And so we're, let's, let's at least see whether the numerics kind of suggest that this may be a good idea. And you can see, indeed, this trajectory went up here and then followed again this parabolic shape and stopped here this one came from up here, followed the parabolic shape and stopped here. Um, and similarly over there, you get a trajectory that stops at this location. And so you see we have generated two new fixed points in this pitchfork bifurcation. So we can look at equilibrium points and we guess there's one here. Yes, indeed. And there's one over there. Indeed, and there should be an unstable fixed point down at the origin. So let's just mark it. In the, okay, so so it seems that indeed there is such an object, a manifold that would contain the dynamics associated with the bifurcation. And uh, <clears throat> we need to now find out what the you know <clears throat> on firm grounds what actually uh, that manifold is, and then we need to find out how to get to a description on that manifold. So there will be two steps, but let's first, first identify what the manifold is. What we see here is it's something that this parabola and it's tangent to the x-axis. And if you look at the equation, the fixed point at the origin has a stable eigenvalue in the y direction and an unstable, well from mu positive, an unstable direction in the x direction, but at the bifurcation mu equals zero, the x direction is actually has a zero eigenvalue. And so it's actually, the x-axis is actually the, the center eigenspace. Remember, we defined eigenspaces. Well, let's go back to, um, to that. So, so we defined eigenspaces uh, associated with the different eigenvalues and, so, eigenvalues. and so we had the stable eigenspace. Oh, good. I didn't mean that. Um, the stable eigenspace, well, shucks, I'm sorry. The stable eigenspace is all those points X in the, in Rn, such that they're spanned by the stable eigenvalues. I, the eigenvectors associated with the stable eigenvalues, which are those eigenvalues with the negative real part. So let me not write that all out. We wrote that down before. Let me just mark that important part is that the real part of the eigenvalue is negative. And similarly, we have the center eigenspace, which are all those vectors 
spanned by those eigenvectors associated with the zero real part eigenvalue and finally the unstable eigenspace which are those where the real part of lambda is positive and so what now the center manifold theorem tells us is that with each of these eigenspaces there's associated a smooth manifold and that smooth manifold uh, is uh, tangent to the corresponding eigenspace so there's a stable manifold which is tangential to this to the center uh, to the stable eigenspace there's a central manifold is the tangential to the center eigenspace and there's an unstable manifold which is tangential to the unstable eigenspace and um, these uh, manifolds um, are invariant under the flow, meaning if you start in the stable manifold, you'll stay in the stable manifold, similarly for the center and this unstable manifold. And uh, the stable manifold is unique, as is the unstable manifold. But the center eigenspace, the center eigen, the center manifold need not be uh, unique. We'll get back to that later. Right now, I just want to state it. But the point is that the center manifold contains all local trajectories. That's, that's the key statement about the center manifold. So W center contains all local trajectories. Meaning any trajectory that stays in the neighborhood of that fixed point for all times, positive and negative, plus and minus infinity, all those trajectories are in the center manifold. And so therefore, you can actually get uh, the, all the dynamics that are of interest to you, which are the local dynamics near the fixed point, are contained there. Um, so, the goal therefore now is how do we get that center manifold and how do we get the dynamics on that center manifold, right? So, so to go back to our picture here that we, from our linear system, what we'd like to find is um, now the center manifold. Well, let, let me draw it in a linear picture there because it's not visible, I can't see it there. Um, if, if from our simulations, it emerges that the center manifold seems to be some kind of a parabolic curve and it seems that when you're on that parabolic curve you always stay there so all the trajectories that are on that center manifold stay on that manifold and we wanted exactly to get the dynamics on that equation on that manifold because we want to see how say in the pitchfork case this fixed point here becomes unstable and then new fixed points emerge out there and all these dynamics we want to have in that sim simpler one-dimensional description, even though original system is higher dimensional. So that's what we're going to do next time.